Hey, 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 how are you doing? My name is Roger Gitonga and I will be taking you through this very interesting but topic in audit and assurance known as the systems of internal control and the test of control. And I really just want to take you through this very interesting roller coaster of emotions that most students normally have around this area and probably maybe to try and tame that down a bit so that whatever might have seemed to be very hard may not be as hard as you thought. Now, first and foremost, I do want to bring to your attention that um, this particular area is an area that you will normally find questions being tested on in section B of your paper. You will never miss a question around this area and therefore that's why we consider it to be a tricky topic, but also an area that we know will regularly be tested by the examiner. Now, I would want us to I just appreciate the fact that the purpose of this video is that it is not a full teaching or a question debrief video, but it's just there to provide better understanding of the area, okay? But if you really need to get into the depth, the depth or in depth, or you want to go deeper than what we're going to be touching on in this paper or in this particular video, then what I would recommend you to do is to read chapter 9 and chapter 12 on the study hub, the ACCA study hub. And I kindly emphasize that you also do the quizzes and the practice questions just to enhance your understanding on this of this area a bit better. Let's start off. Now, first and foremost, what are we going to be covering particularly in this journey? All right, what are we going to be looking at in this video? Now, I hope that after this video that you will not be stuck in the clouds of your thoughts, but you will supersede it like the hot air balloon in that picture that you see there. That's my hope that at the end of this particular video, internal controls and the test of controls will not be an area of concern for you anymore. So we're going to first and foremost look at an intro of the two topics with um, examples. And then we are going to look at two ways that it can be examined. And then finally, we're going to give a conclusion and give some final tips from myself. Now, I want to first and foremost understand and maybe understand it with you. Why is this such an important area? How does this particular area link with other areas of um, the syllabus? Now, I want us to take us a bit back where we appreciate the fact that before we test the controls, we do have audit risk. And maybe just to simplify what audit risk is all about, it's by simply you know, the auditor might simply give the wrong audit opinion. But I want us to appreciate the fact that there were three components of the audit risk or three components that would form the audit risk. One was the inherent, the inherent then there was the control risk, and there was the, um, the detection risk. Now, the inherent and the control risk would give a rise to the risk of material misstatement. So we do appreciate the fact that control risk is basically the risk that a misstatement that could occur in an assertion and that could be material either individually or in aggregate with other misstatements will not be prevented or detected or rather will not be prevented or detected and corrected on a timely basis by the entity's controls. In simple terms, it might fail to serve its purpose and hence increase the risk of material misstatement, which will in turn affect our opinion as the auditors. So that is how we just want to link up the internal controls, appreciating the fact that if we find it necessary to test the efficiency of those controls, it's because we know that they are operating effectively or we can rely on them. And therefore, we want to see how effective they are, because if the controls are effective, then the material misstatements reduce. But if the controls are not effective, then the risk of material misstatements increases. And that means that we have to perform more substantive procedures, isn't it? We have to collect more evidence so that we can form our opinion. Now, 
I want us to look at internal controls first and foremost. Let's try and get into the jargon and then we'll try and simplify it. So what are internal controls? This is the process designed, implemented, and maintained. I love these three words. Designed first and foremost, implemented, and maintained. Those three are very critical. But again, this is not a teaching video. But I just want you guys to keep that in mind. With governance. So this is done by those charged with governance and other personnel. Not by the auditors. Very important. A lot of students make this error even in public knowledge a lot of people think that it is the primary responsibility of the auditor to come up with these internal controls which is not the case we can see that this is designed implemented and maintained by those charged with governance management and other personnel to do what to provide reasonable assurance about the achievement of an entity's objectives with regard to reliability of financial reporting, effectiveness and efficiency of operations and compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Now in simple terms, we just want to come up with certain measures that will help us to actually achieve our goals as a company, especially regarding the reliability of financial reporting. Now, I want us to look at an example of an internal control there. As you can see, that's a picture of a biometric scanner. Other examples of internal controls would include CCTVs, reconciliations like the supplier statement reconciliations, the bank statement reconciliations. We have policies, we have authorization and approval techniques, we have segregation of duties. While with the test of controls, what, are, what is a test of control? Now, a test of control is an audit procedure designed to evaluate. I want us to maybe as emphasize on this it's a procedure now by the auditor so the internal controls are developed by management while the test of controls are an audit procedure they are done by the auditor why so that we can evaluate the operating effectiveness of controls how effective are our controls in preventing or detecting and correcting material misstatements at the assertion level now let's try to dive a bit into this let's just just give an understanding okay so let's give an example of an internal control for instance the tasks of taking orders recording sales and receiving payment are allocated to three different staff members what do you see there just think about it hmm what do you see there just pause and think about this you appreciate the fact that the tasks of taking the order, and this is under now the sales system, taking orders, receiving the sale, recording the sales, and receiving payment from our customers are given by th are given to three different people. That is a segregation of duties. You're right. We've separated those roles to three different people. Now, how do we test? this control oh my do I go this way do I go that way <laughs> how do I test this control how do I ensure or I confirm that this control is working effectively now I would observe the processing of orders through this sales cycle and inspect sign-offs to evaluate whether proper segregation of duties is operating. Now, I want us to think about this carefully. I have first and foremost used a control activity, which is observation. I want to observe how these three tasks are being done and who are doing them. So I'm observing one, the processing of orders through the sales cycle and I'm also inspecting another verb, sign-offs, to evaluate. Now, the sign-offs is just to see who is signing off the task. Who has said that they've taken the order? Who has said that they've recorded the sale? Who has said that they've received the payment? You know, every single time these tasks are happening, they need to sign off. So I'm observing what is happening. I'm observing the person who is taking the order. I'm observing that someone different is recording the sale. I'm observing that someone different is receiving payment. 
But I'm also inspecting that they are signing off against their task just to ev evaluate that there's a proper segregation of duties. I hope we're getting somewhere. But if we're not, let's make it better in the next slide. Now, another example. Purchase orders are raised for each purchase. Hmm, fantastic. Now, we look at the purchase system here. So, for each purchase we make from a supplier, we want to raise a purchase order. And this is authorized or allowed for lack of a better term, by the purchasing director or manager through their signature. So when there's an authorization activity there. You see, one of the control activities is authorization. And we're appreciating the fact that as much as we want to make a purchase to our supplier, there has to be an order that is raised, but that order needs to be authorized. It needs to be allowed. That's a control that ensures that we don't make purchases for either our own private use or purchases that the company doesn't really need or purchases from a fictitious supplier. You know, we don't, we don't want to find ourselves in such cases. So having authorization from a senior official like the purchase director is a fantastic move. Now, what is the test of control for this? Think about it. Eman, come on, you're doing well. Keep going. All your hard work will pay off in the end. Think about it. You're almost there. You're almost there. I'm sure you got the answer. Look at this. Examine a sample of purchase orders. Mm -hmm. Why? And inspect for what? Evidence. Remember the authorization. Now, I want to test if this control is happening. I want to test or confirm that the director has signed off, has authorized by his signature. So I'll have, to, I'll have to take a sample of purchase orders, not all of them. We don't have the time for that. A sample of purchase orders and inspect for evidence of the signature of the purchase director. Fantastic. To ensure they have been properly or appropriately authorized. Now, I also want us to think about this. Just give it a second. Just give it a second. Pause there. Just wait. I want us to ask a question here that is very critical. I'm sure you asked this question. What is the difference between a test of control and a substantive procedure? What is the difference between the two? Let's dive into this a bit. So, by definition, a test of control is an audit procedure designed to evaluate the operating effectiveness on controls in preventing or detecting and correcting material misstatements at the assertion level. Let's repeat that again. A test of control is an audit procedure, so it's done by the auditor, but why? So that we can evaluate how effective these controls are in doing their purpose, in preventing or detecting and correcting material misstatements. What about substantive procedure? This is an audit procedure designed to detect material misstatements at the assertion level. Look at the difference. One focuses on the operating effectiveness of the controls. Are the controls working? Are they there? While the substantive procedures is focusing more on detecting material misstatements. One is confirming if the controls are there to prevent or detect and correct material misstatements, while the other one is there to just detect the material misstatements. Now, Maybe this is still not making a bit of sense. I'd also recommend us to just go into chapter 15 on the study hub, read a bit more on what substantive procedures are all about. We talk about audit evidence in chapter 15. But let's just try and simplify this jargon. In the tests of control, TOC, they answer the question, has this control operated? Is this control there? And the answer can only be a yes or no. So for you to confirm if you're doing a test of control, your answer should be a yes or no. Like, for instance, how can I confirm if the CCTV is there? 
Is there CCTV? Is there CCTV? I can observe, I can inspect, I can look, you know. And the thing is that by doing so, I can appreciate the fact that I can say that yes, the CCTV is there. How can I confirm that you, for instance, you guys have a fingerprint scan on your phone or a face scanner, right? Or a code or a pattern that you draw to unlock your phone. How will I know that that control is there? How will I know it's operating effectively? I can take your phone, put my fingerprint. If it allow, if it, if it denies me access, it's working. So the question is, is the fingerprint scanner working? Yes or no? So monetary amounts are not relevant in this part. While for substantive procedures, they must consider monetary amounts. You must consider testing the accuracy of transactions, you know, the valuation of balances, the cutoff assertions, you know, the completeness of all transactions being recorded. Your focus is on the money, on the monetary amounts. Now let's get into the questions. In respect of the payroll, this is a question you can find. We're going to be looking at two examinable ways that, can, that, that this can be tested by the examiner. Example one is on a question known as trombone company. This is found on the study hub. Go to your practice aspect. You know, you'll have quizzes, then practice. Click on quizzes, I mean on practice, and scroll all the way down. Or you can just search on the page for trombone. And question, the part A of that question asks us, in respect of the payroll system of trombone company, identify and explain five deficiencies that's one. Recommend a control to address each of these deficiencies. And then three, describe a test of control Viola and company should perform to assess if each of these controls is operating effectively. So let's try and understand. What is a deficiency first and foremost? Two things. When a control is unable to prevent or detect and correct misstatements in the financial statements on a timely basis, that's a deficiency. If a control is unable to fulfill its purpose by preventing or detecting um, or preventing or detecting and correcting material misstatements on a timely basis, then that's a, that's a deficiency. Or two, when a control that is necessary, that is needed to prevent or detect and co correct material misstatements is missing, is not there, then that's a deficiency. Now, let's try and understand something here. This is one I picked up from the scenario. The deficiency we picked up was that the wages calculation are generated by the payroll system and there are no checks performed. Oh my. So look at that deficiency. What's happening? Calculations, calculations are being done, but there are no checks. There are no checks. So a control that is needed is missing. That's a deficiency. It's missing because the checks are not being done. So that's a deficiency. Now, how do I explain a deficiency? Explain the consequences that could result from this deficiency for the company. I personally like to ask the question, what could go wrong for the company if this is not fixed? What could go wrong if these checks are not performed? What could go wrong? Look at this. Therefore, if system errors occur during the payroll processing, this will not be identified. Therefore, what about that? What if these errors are not identified in, on a timely basis? What could go wrong? Well, this could result in wages being over or under calculated leading to what? An additional payroll cost or a loss of employee goodwill. You see, we're now explaining what could go wrong. That they could le lose their employee goodwill. They could l pay more in terms of a payroll costs. You appreciate this now. Now look at this. A senior member... This is a recommendation. Now, before I even read it through, what should you think? How do I give a good recommendation? Recommendations will not eliminate the weakness, but they will reduce it to an acceptable level. So your answer will never be 100% foolproof. Never. Because if we, the humans, are the ones coming up with the controls, yet we are imperfect, how much more the things that we come up with? But do this. Ensure it gives a good solution to the problem. 
For instance, if I have a leaking tap and you tell me that the solution you're giving me is to observe that leaking tap, I might as well be ready to pay a very high water bill with such solutions that I might receive, isn't it? But if you say, fix it, go into detail. Answer the questions. Who? Who will fix it? What will be fixed? When will it be fixed? How will it be fixed? That, when you give those factors, you're answering a good recommendation. Now, for instance, look at this. We're asking the recommendation. Remember the, the deficiency. Look at what we're giving as a recommendation. A senior member. Who? A senior member of the payroll team. You've answered the question. Who? Fantastic. She'll do what? She'll recalculate the gross and net pay workings. For who? A sample of employees. And compare their results to the output from the payroll system. Then what? Then this calculation should be signed as approved before payments are made. Wow. Now how do I give? Look at that. That's a controlled recommendation. Now, how do I find out if this control is being operated or exists? Now I want to give the test of control here. Not the recommendation but the test of control. How do I find, find out if this control is being operated or exists? Review a sample of the gross to the net pay calculations for evidence that they are being undertaken and signed as approved. Wow. Look at that. Now we are testing the recommendation. We are testing if this is there. That's what we are testing on. Let's look at another example. Examine, this is another second example. It is based on a question on Caterpillar. And this is from your practice test 2 on the ACCA um, CBE practice platform. Now the question said, identify and explain three direct controls in Caterpillar's company's cash receipts system and describe a test of control the auditor should perform to assess if each of these controls is operating effectively. Let's go to the strength. Cash received from customers is taken to the bank daily via collection by a security company. That's a control. Cash, is being re cash that was received from the customers is being collected by a security company daily. But how do we explain? How do we explain this? Now, every single time you're thinking about how to explain your control, you want to think about what it prevents. All right. What does it prevent? Don't just tell us it prevents fraud. What type of fraud? It prevents error. What type of error? All controls are meant to pre prevent or detect and correct fraud, risk and error. You mentioned the type. The type of fraud you think it might help you prevent as a company. Like this. This ensures that cash is safeguarded. Look at the thing we're saying. It helps us to prevent theft. It helps us to prevent theft of cash. Now you're specific. You should explain it in that manner. And then, how do I test if this is being done? How do I test if this is working? During the store visits, you can, one, inquire of the staff how the cash is transferred to the bank. But if you stop there, that will only give you half a mark. Because inquiry, people can lie to you, isn't it? So you want to go deeper and say, a sample of invoices... Take a sample of invoices from the collection company. Review them. Take a sample of invoices that they've received from, the, from this security company and review. You know, that will show evidence that, the, that this security company is consistently collecting money daily. Right? So, review and confirm that they're, they're charging centipede company on a daily basis. Now, I would recommend if you want to go deeper into this question, go do it. Go to the practice test on the CBE practice platform. Go to the study hub. Look for trombone. Do the whole question. Come on. Now, in addition, during these visits, observe the cash collection process. You can also observe. It's not wrong, but if you only stayed with the first point, I'll still give you one mark. Because you've done a fantastic job there by giving a test of control, by confirming that that control is present, that it is working effectively. Now, my final tips as we end. Don't be sad. We will review another one again. But let's look at our final tips. One, please develop an I can do it attitude. Appreciate the fact that there is nothing 
that you are reading here that is made by an extra, uh, an ET, an alien. You know? Appreciate the fact that this is humans who have come up with this content, these procedures. You can also think. You can also come up with them. You can also come up with solutions. I know you can do it. Once your mind shifts, listen to this video again. I'm sure you enjoyed it. Practice questions on the ACCA study hub. I must tell you for a fact that practice will always give you a chance to see different ways that the examiner can test a question or a concept. So do more questions and you'll also be more comfortable. This is why I emphasize on you using the ACCSCB practice platform so that you can also be more comfortable in typing. Increase your speed, right? So that speed is never a problem, all right? Practice, 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 and I'm sure you will get it. And then relax. Prepare for your exam. Before the exam day, relax. You're doing well. And you did it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name again is Roger Kitonga. And all the best in your internal controls and test of controls revision. Thank you.